Excellent. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to say a very big thank you to uh, Roya for uh, inviting me here this evening. Actually, just looking through the list of, of invited speakers over the, the past months and looking into the, 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 the months coming, um, I'm absolutely honoured to, to be asked. And uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity to network with all of you. And uh, I suppose the one thing that strikes me about virtual worlds and why I'm so attracted to it is the fact that we can have these kind of gatherings and uh, it's it's just an, an amazing opportunity to network with, with each other. So Roy's going to help me out. Obviously, we have the issue with me not hearing, but we get through it. Um, my name is Margaret Keane. Some of you might know me um, from uh, Facebook and uh, from um, Twitter uh, as the founder of giftedkids.ie. It's the support and advocacy website for gifted children or exceptionally able children as we would call them here in Ireland uh, and twice exceptional children. Um, we provide uh, an online forum uh, which is very, very busy and actually it's great because um, we have a great team of, of volunteers, both teachers and uh, parents who actually moderate that, uh, that forum. Uh, we also run a series of webinars. Um, we, we've been lucky to have such uh, interesting. Um, I don't know if Tim is here this evening, but uh, Tim has Tim Drakeup has has, uh, has done a webinar for us, as um, as has Christine Fonseca. So um, it's it's been great. Okay, I'm just going to just check and see if there's anything um, coming in there. No, we're fine. Oh, Tim is here. Great, great, Tim. Shout out for me. Wish me luck as as I, as I delve into this virtual world. Well, uh, Roy, can we just go on to the next slide, please? Um, just, oh, just okay. <laughs> right. Apologies. Uh, do you want to have a few words there? You'll have to let me know when you're finished. Okay. Well, um, hello everybody. Welcome to the global oh, virtual meeting. Already... From <laughs> no problem. <laughs> well, welcome everybody to global virtual meeting for gifted education. So I. Uh, Take a seat and just wait for Margaret and and change the slide. Well, okay. Okay, Roy, uh, as you've changed the, the slider, I hope um, I'm not talking over you. Um, I'm sure you're probably giving an introduction there, so thank you for that. Um, <laughs> we'll get through this, we'll get through this. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Um, you can see, obviously, um, from the first slide up there, uh, it's a saying, it's a Confucius saying, and um, I have to thank, thank James for this one because uh, James uh, Corbett, who's my... Um, I suppose partner in crime when it comes to Mission V Education uh, Limited, which is a, a not-for-profit organization set up specifically uh, to develop um, game-based learning initiatives uh, using things like virtual worlds technology for the support of primary and post-primary students in Ireland with a special emphasis on uh, high potential students and those who are um, currently underachieving. So, James dug this um, this saying out, and I think it's very telling. And I want you to kind of keep that in your mind today as, uh, as as we go through the slides. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. And I think in terms of learning, the, this is the kind of mantra that we need to keep in our heads, both as educators and uh, as parents. So, Roy, if you can just go on to the next one, please. Okay, so um, basically I just want to give you a summary of what we're going to cover this evening. I'll try and keep it brief. I know that we're a little bit delayed starting. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a background to the Mission V um, project that we've been running. Uh, and 
to just name check some education models that have influenced us in some decisions we've made around Mission V. Then I want to go specifically into the Mission V pilot and explain what we've done with that and where we're going with it. Then a quick explanation of what exactly Mission V is, um, what does it mean and how uh, can educators use it. And then there's an add-on at the end and I think uh, we've been involved, both James and myself, in a really um, interesting initiative um, in Ireland and that's the whole use of, of game-based learning and I think this has a special resonance with um, with high potential students and so we'll have a look at that and see how we can um, how we can uh, go forward um, next slide please so this slide that's coming through now is, is really just, uh, I suppose, a background to the um, Irish gifted education situation at the moment. Um, now, obviously, some of these issues we have on a global um, scale. Some of you are very familiar with it, like dealing with the mis myths and misconceptions of giftedness, um, the idea of twice exceptional students, that learning difficulties and disabilities can mask high ability and high potential. Um, but in Ireland, we've got a very specific issue, and we've got the, pro the lack of teacher training and specifically uh, funding for gifted education. Hopefully, that will change in the next few years. Uh, certainly. Um, we've had a change of government and uh, Rory Quinn, our Minister for Education, seems to be saying all the right things when it comes to um, supporting gifted education. Um, but obviously a lot of you would know of our situation in Ireland that we're, we're facing some very tough economic times, so it may be very difficult to translate that desire to support this group of students into actual um, you know, funding for programmes. But you know, we, we live in hope and we, we just keep advocating on their behalf. Um, so in terms of numbers here of how we define uh, exceptionally able students, this figure that I have comes from um, the Irish Centre for Talented Youth. They sometimes quote 23,000, but it's based on a study um, some years ago. Um, speaking to Colm O'Reilly, who's the director of the Irish Centre for Talented Youth, he would put it roughly at around 27,000 um, students. Um, but, you know, some have put it a, a lot more. When you consider that uh, the Irish Centre for Talented Youth, which runs enrichment programmes for both primary and post-primary students, um, secondary school, as you would know in terms of post-primary, um, many of you, um, they cater for about 4,000 students each year. So automatically you can see that um, we have a situation where there's a, a huge deficit in terms of supports for these kids. We don't have any coordinated effort to reach this group um, in, in its entirety, th entirety throughout the country, so that, that's a problem. And it is, as we've put there, a system failure. And it's not a system failure just for the kids themselves, but it's also for their families and, and critically for teachers too. Because what we found from the Gifted Kids Forum is that teachers do want to support these kids, um, but they haven't had the training and they're looking for information and I suppose that's one of the reasons why we run our, our webinar program um, through Learn Central and the Global Gifted uh, Network. So all of the things I said there, difficult to identify, you'd probably, you know, that has, that has a residence worldwide, but um, the whole idea of having lack of opportunities for exceptionally able students, particularly from disadvantaged areas, that, that's um, something that would be close to gifted kids .ie's heart, I suppose, and, and is consistent with their mission. We want to ensure that every child, regardless of background, um, every high ability or high potential child, regardless of background, will get access to appropriate, uh, an appropriate education um, that will support both their social and emotional needs, but also their educational needs as well. Um, Next slide, please, Roya. Okay. Um, so the needs, now, obviously, I'm speaking to the converted here. You might have different ideas. Um, I just want to say from the outset that uh, I don't consider myself um, an, an expert in, in, in gifted education. I'm here to learn. I think um, most of us within uh, our, our network w would see themselves as learning from each other. And I've certainly learned from... Um, from things like Mary's Gifted Group, um, it's, it's been a fantastic uh, resource. But basically on the Gifted Kids site we were getting um, requests from teachers for information. Um, so we, we started to have a look at what exactly, um, how we could provide practical supports for them and they in turn could then provide the practical supports for their, their uh, students in their care. So we identified um, the problems as you've seen in the previous slide but then we looked at the needs, tried to drill it down to very basic needs. These children, as we know, need greater breadth and depth of curriculum. Um, 
we need the department to actually start funding gifted education pro pro programs um, and we need teacher training we have mentioned that before that's a huge uh, gap in learning for for teachers um, and critically as well in terms of supporting the social and emotional um, needs of this cohort of students we do need to start providing them with peer group development opportunities um, that's where your sense of well-being comes. I mean, I, I have to say in terms of finding things like Mary's Gifted Group on Facebook has just been a, a, such um, a bonus. You know, it, it's, that's where we, we, we excel as human beings when we come together and we can um, share ideas and uh, bounce um, uh, ideas off each other. Next um, slide, please, Roya. So the risks, if we don't support those needs, um, Obviously, a very simple equation there, total disengagement with learning. Um, a lot of you would be familiar with that. Um, loss of motivation and this idea of chronic underachievement. Again, through the Gifted Kids Forum, I think that is one of the most discussed items, um, both by parents and by teachers, but primarily parents in terms of they have these incredibly bright children who had a joy of learning but suddenly hit school and that joy was extinguished. And this is one of the reasons why we've, we, we began to look at um, initiatives like Mission.